All right, now you've had a little fun with the basic tool set, and it's time to expand our tool set. But the key thing to understand about ZBrush here is that what we're really dealing with is a collection of these different systems. And I like to think about ZBrush as having this circularity, this where all these different features rely upon each other, these systems, I should say. And so what we want to be looking at now is this idea of a brush system. And it's really important to think of it along these lines because it is a system. It's developed as an ecosystem of features that all interact with each other and, and improve each other and help you get really um, better results, great results, all right? So we started out with the standard brush. And the standard brush is really just a type of brush. So at the top of this, within the system, is type. And like I said, there's the standard brush, all right? But there are other brush types for us to use to get different levels of control. One of them is the move brush. So if I was to come over here into this little tiny ball icon and I hover over that, there's a couple of things you can see that I think are relatively important. Number one, notice the base type, it says standard, and then it tells you what the name of it is. Now, if we click this, we get a whole bunch of other brushes and what we want to look at now is this little brush called the move brush okay and i'm going to leave my cursor over it it's towards the right hand side of the screen and if you look at the uh let's say the um base type the base type is move that's the type that's one of the key things and what that means is that the algorithm or the behavior the core behavior is different on top of type if you open up oops if you open up the brush palette up here at the very top, you see all of these modifiers. All right, and that's what we really want to look at today. In terms of the brush system, if we come back to this idea of brush system, one of the core elements of the brush system is its type, which to me is really the algorithm and uh, the math behind it. Then the other element is the modifiers. And the most important element of that is, in my opinion, type. And then modifiers just allow you to change aspects within that type. You can't use modifiers to make the move brush the standard brush. That's not possible. If we come in and switch over to the move brush, you'll see relatively quick. Let's increase our draw size. Press S. And so the move brush does this. The standard brush does not do this. And there's no modifier on the planet that's going to uh, make it do that. Okay, The move brush is something we use to make macro level changes to our thing. And the degree to which we make the changes is impacted by the draw size. So we can make smaller changes. Like that. And be like, I just want to tuck some geometry in underneath the nostril. I just want to tuck some geometry up underneath the nose. I just want to push that nostril back in space so that it gets a little bit more depth in the face, for example. I'm going to increase this and push the eye back a little bit so I get a little bit more depth in that eye and pull this forward a tiny bit. Notice how when I do this, I'm not really pulling from a three-quarters view. I'm pulling, um, well, I'm sorry, I'm not pulling from a side view. I'm pulling from a three-quarters view, okay? Depth is the biggest mistake that beginners make. They do not achieve appropriate depth, and they make everything kind of engraved or incised along a plane. But in order for you to be a sculptor, you need to understand depth. It's the most important ingredient. It's what separates us from painters, is that we work with depth. A painter fakes depth. A sculptor fakes depth. But we also work with depth. We fake it by putting deeper elements inside here and pushing that in to create shadow. But you've got to start with a level of depth and offsets and separations between elements right so for example the nostrils pushed back this part of the columnella in the mouth that's pushed forward and so there's an offset right there 
you need to have those offsets for this to start to become sculpture. The other thing that's really important is you need to look at things from this view. This view is incredibly important, right? Is it flat? If it's flat, you're not establishing proper depth. You've got to always think about curves. And if you look at the face, you got to think about offsets like that, where this part of the anatomy, which is the superciliary arch in the glabella, pushes forward. And then this part of the anatomy kind of pulls itself down and slides back and just to protect the eye. And you got to think about the roundness and the curvature always when you're doing this. That's how you're going to get better at sculpting and imagining form. I'm going to push that back and I'm going to push these cheeks back and push that cheek fat back. And there you go. Okay. Now we're obviously doing a caricature here. So let's just augment that. There we go. Cool. Give them a little bit more in the back of the head. Maybe we can give the back of the head a little bit more brain space. Lift it up a little bit. There you go. I'm OK with this. All right, so that's the standard brush. That's the move brush. That's the different type of brush. Now we're going to switch to another type of brush. I'm going to come in here and switch over into the clay brush. Notice its base type says clay. And notice there's a ton of brushes in here, right? But most of the artists I've known and trained over the years usually use only a few different brushes. I want to use the clay brush. We're going to use the clay, the standard, and the move brush. And these are going to serve as a conduit to introduce you to another system within ZBrush. So uh, I'll sketch this out here for you in a moment. We've been talking about the brush system. And within the brush system, we've talked about the type and we've talked about modifiers. The brush system overlaps with something we will call the geometry system, right? And if you're coming from Maya or Blender or something like that, all I'm talking about is polygons. So how do you manage polygons? And I like to think about polygons as a separate system inside of ZBrush because there are things like subtools. There's things within the geometry area with edge loops and DynaMesh. And there's all these ways for us to work with polygons that I want to make sure I introduce to you and get you comfortable with. It's just a system of managing your polygons. The brush system and the geometry system, of course, overlap because you're using brushes to sculpt geometry. But one of the important areas where they overlap is a feature called um, resolution levels. And resolution levels are put right here in geometry. So if I come in here to geometry, you can see right up at the top, I've got the option to divide this, and now I have levels. And if we turn polyframe on right here, you can see as I go up, and I got to turn this on and off again, you get different levels of density. If I go down, there you go. You go up, down, up, down. Okay. And if you look at the top up here, it says 174,000. And I go down, and it says 43. So those are resolution levels. And what those resolution levels allow me to do is create or add more detail. So for example, right here in the mouth, I'm having a hard time. Let's switch back over to the standard brush. Uh, accidentally clicked the wrong thing. Let's come over here to standard. I'm going to press S on the keyboard. So I'm only seeing the brushes that start with S. Hit the standard brush and just try to carve that in. And I'm not getting a lot of form. It's, it's tough. So let me take my resolution level up. And there you go. And now I've got more to work with. There you go. That's nice. OK. Now I can go in and I can get more of this together. But as I come in here, 
I really want to kind of tighten this in. I'm going to get back to the clay brush here in a moment, but this is a great moment for me to introduce you to what modifiers do. In brush, in modifier, there's a thing called brush modifier. And this is kind of like a catch-all. It just does different things for different brushes. And sometimes it does absolutely zero. Um, if you hover over that with control, sometimes you'll get it. It's, it's, it's a secondary effect is what they call it. Uh, and th there's some brushes that it does X, Y, and Z for, but specifically you'll see it mentions for the standard brush, if you put it to a positive number, it's going to pinch, otherwise it's going to inflate. Okay, so I'm going to put it to a, a standard, uh, a positive number, I should say, and then watch what happens as I come in. I'm going to press Alt, and let's turn the polyframe on, and you'll see that it pinches the geometry in and creates a clean edge. Okay, and all that's essentially doing is taking all of these rows and, and it's pulling them all into a nice tight row. That's it. It's pinching all of the geometry. And you can do the same thing up here. I can say, instead of pressing Alt and dividing it, I can do this while I'm pulling form out. And uh, I'm going to shift smooth this a little bit. And then there you go. It's a great way to create more linear work. All right. Uh, it only really works if the geometry is there. So it's not really a good thing to do on this level. But there you go. You know, this is kind of fascinating how this works. I'll press Alt to give a little bit. And then I'll press Alt to start to create this little shape in here, the filtrum. There you go. And then we can come into the corner. And I'm pressing Alt right now. Yeah, like that. And there you go. You can and you can smooth it out once you've done that and and come back in and okay, there we go. And there's a couple of brushes that have this built into them. One of the brushes I think is really cool. If you press the B button, you'll get the brush pop up. And I'm going to press D as in dog. And this is this thing called Damn Standard. Okay. <laughs> done by a really wonderful artist. You can see his URL right there. And this uses an alpha, which is part of the brush system and certain settings. If we come into brush, you see it's brush modifier set to 32. And this creates beautiful line work. Look at that. Okay, and if I wanted to come in and really start to define that eyelid, that's pretty beautiful, isn't it? And notice how it's got Z sub on. So some brushes will come in. If I turn Z add on, then it's going to actually pull out and I'd have to press Alt to subtract. Okay, so but the damn standard brush is really designed for you to kind of be cutting and dealing with line work. So I'm going to pull this in. This is a little bit of an intense line though. So I'm going to come in and introduce another feature of the brush system, which is Z intensity. And I'm going to use this to just kind of lightly score the surface and start to underline the eye a little bit. And this way, I'm not going to have such a massive um, reaction to it. And I can come in and have use this in multiple places to just create a little bit of edge work that's not going to be so aggressive. Okay. Now I'm going to come in and just let's get this little, this little shape that fits right there and separates the eyelid. Press Alt and get a harder edge right in there. Cool. Okay, there we go. See how I'm going to just pull this all the way around and then I'm going to press Alt to really help me build a nice lip for that eyelid and then let go of Alt and build a nice down plane for the eyelid. There you go. A lot of crazy monkey business right in there. But let's go into the next brush to introduce how we can kind of fix that. Let's go back into the clay brush. And the clay brush is really designed um, it's just, it's this great kind of, it flattens the surface. It also builds up the surface and it builds it up in this methodical way. So, and that's the way I like to use it. The way Ofer explained it to me back in the day is that it's like a strip of clay. So for me, the key thing to the clay brush is how you apply it. You don't come in and just be like, ah, nah, 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 nah. That's not, that's not going to get you too much results. You want to build. So you Build it like you're laying down strips of clay like that. And here I'm going to press lightly, but here I'm going to press harder because I want that strip to have more thickness. 
and then you'll come and build along this way and then and just be soft that however hard you press that's where these things are gonna pull in there you go there you go okay voila 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 okay all right now I'm gonna try to put a pupil in there actually I'm gonna try to put the iris and the pupil that's what we do when we sculpt I might run out of geometry and notice how I have to push push lift the pin and push so I'm gonna introduce you to another brush called clay buildup and clay buildup is an introduction to how features add things the only thing that this brush really does is inside samples it has buildup on that might be a little high level for you but you might be ready for that the only difference is that is that feature right there and there's an alpha but you can get rid of that alpha you know, and we come back in here, and well, all it means is that it'll just continually push and continually add as you don't have to lift the pin all the time. But you got to be careful. I'm going to smooth this out and press Alt to just carve a little bit in, and that looks really nice. Okay, then I'm going to just widen that a little bit. And then we will go back to the damn standard brush and we'll carve in that down that little line right there. Then I will press Alt to help me get an, an edge, a lip. There you go. We can come in here and get a little notch to separate out the nostril from the rest. And that helps you really define a nostril. You don't need too much more than that. Okay. And smooth that out a little bit. Come in here. Add a couple of little wrinkles. Come in here and we can add a couple of these little guys. You can increase your Z intensity. Okay, some little cool, interesting line work, all right? There's a lot of things I introduced you to here, but the key thing to understand is that you learned a little bit about the brush system and you learned a tiny bit about the geometry system and really just the resolution levels. Now, if I want more detail, I divide this. If you're wondering what Dynamesh is, you've been reading about it and all of that, don't worry about that. We'll get to that in a moment. The first thing is for you to go in and get a little bit of some sculpting done to help you kind of produce a result that you're happy with. You know, a result that's just like, oh, that's kind of cool. This is this kind of weird potato head type dude. Okay. All right. Now, if anything funky happens like that, undo. Okay. Because we have Dynamesh open. So just undo and make that happen. If anything goes weird with your brushes, you can always go into the brush palette and you go all the way down to the bottom and you see reset all brushes. That'll get you through most of the problems that you'll encounter. All right, have some fun.